Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 91 in December of 2015, December 4th. Looking forward to the end of the holidays where people start disappearing left and right and we end up with fewer and fewer meetings. Hope everybody had a wonderful week off last week if you did and you're staying warm and all those kinds of good things, assuming you're in a cold part of the world, which pretty much everybody here, the attendees is, I think. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that are not here with us right now. Uh, let's move on into the agenda. The agenda is going to look a lot like the last time we met. We'll do our triage thing that we always do. We'll give a status update on Wix 3.10.2, which I really do believe will be the last one until uh, we get to the end, which we will discuss when we get to that point. And then we'll do the usual questions and comments and things that people might have at this point in time. So triage then. Bob, you ready? I am ready. Here we go. One, two, three, six bugs. Starting at the bottom, something about content satellites do not work in 2015. Yep, obviously an old bug reopened. Six-year-old bug. Six-year-old bug reopened. So that's not really... All right. It was fixed and then it's been broken again. Uh, probably not going to get fixed in Wix 3.5. And my mouse cursor just disappeared. Go figure. All right. Um... I really want to tell them to open a new bug with new issues, but they're probably going to tell me it's the exact same thing. So, um, um, it's only with just two. Oh yeah. So I guess we can open it, put it in 3x, and see if somebody wants to fix it. Yeah, I'm not uh, not seeing anything that you know calls out. Or a simple thing. Well, I know there were a couple changes to heat in the last couple releases, so could have been some side effect of those. But generally, those people are making things better, I thought. But yeah, you know, whatever. I don't do heat, and so and more votive, and this kind of crosses both of those. So yep. So three X, and hopefully somebody will be interested in fixing that or not. Ah, Jacob is here. We gave him this bug. Sorry for the late. What you get for not showing up? Oh, log is here. Oh, cool. Cool. So, do we keep this bug open one more week now that we have logs? Yeah, I yeah, think I he's think. reset the clock. Oh, uh, right when we were right. about to close it, or whatever. Uh, all right. So yeah. All right. Cool. So we'll let um, Jacob do that. Sounds like he's willing to go take a look at the logs. That's awesome. All right. Error 18 displayed when embedded UI if dialog stays on screen for more than 30 seconds. 30 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes. Oof. Which is, yeah. Wow, yeah. On Is displayed in a pop-up if I leave the welcome dialog on screen for more than 30 minutes in case I use embedded UI. This just sounds like MSI is wanting to shut it down. I guess. I mean, because with embedded UI, there's no MSI has no clue that you know it's sitting idle. Yeah, this is embedded UI, and I generally don't recommend using embedded UI, and because it has all kinds of quirky things about it. So I guess we could toss it through X, and someone can go work on it. So I'm not sure that you know. I don't, I don't think I don't think there's not anything we can do here. I'd be surprised if there's anything we could do. We could we could close it with the assumption of uh, that this is external, or we could toss it in three X. I'm I'm good with whatever you know whatever you guys want to do. I would vote for external. Well, you got two votes. All right. Uh, Jacob or Sean want to be the the final tipping point, or Phil? Oh, Phil's out there too. All right. You got Sean. Good enough for me. Oh, and Jacob. All right. <laughs> boom. The boom, entire boom, boom. bench has said. The entire said. bench. Yeah, I was going to bring that up in comments. Yeah. I kind of like oh, that. sorry. It might work. And I'll, I'll explain why when we get to questions, comments, and things like that. All right. Command line passive prompt restart is not showing the restart dialog. This is interesting. Yes, it is. Um, I don't actually know which one wins. Uh, well, passive wins. Well, I'm sorry. I, let me say it differently. I don't know which one is supposed to win 
in this spec? Like, what is which one wins in the MSI case? Passive wins? No, uh, no. See, passive passive is passive is the interesting case, right? Because it, unlike silent, when you do passive, you will still get a UAC prompt, for example. So clearly, passive doesn't win all the time. Well, it can't. Like even in silent. Oh, in silent, you won't get a UAC prompt. Silent right? fails. Silent, silent will fail. fail. Passive will passive prompt. prompt. Hmm. Yeah. Which you know kind of defeats the whole purpose of passive, but also makes it you know moderately usable. Except that you. I guess the reason that makes sense to me is that you're showing UI, so that one seems okay-ish. But yeah, okay. Ish. I mean, I've always thought of passive as you can never, you can never modally prompt. You could prompt yeah. modelessly if you wanted to. And MSI reason. does the same, right? I'm pretty sure MSI does the same in passive. If you're yes. MSI, Sorry, that's what I was talking them. about. That's what I was talking about. Burn oh. does the same as well. Okay. MSI does that definitely. Okay. Um, and as the the comments note, um, so does .NET. And I have to kind of ask myself, what does prompt restart actually mean? It's the default. It's explicitly calling out the default. So then why is there a switch for it? Unless it's the override passive, for example. Right. I, I don't have any any like special memory of those decisions, but because that net that net's chainer does it, I'm wondering if that's why Burn got the prompt restart switch. I don't know that. Well, the prompt restart I think is documented. Part of MSI has it too. I'm pretty sure. Oh, interesting. Uh, no, Phil, the, the prompt restart sets a flag. I mean, the BA could ignore it, but it wouldn't have any knowledge that the switch was passed. Right, because prompt restart will set the flag to the same as what the default flag is, which means we'd have to create another state for the flag, which is default, and then add an explicit state for prompt restart, I believe. This is a whole lot of conjecture. We Someone needs to go dig in to um, verify all of this. So let's back up and go, what do we want it to do? Right. Do we want prompt restart on passive to prompt for restart? Sean says passive should win, no prompt. Yeah, I want to say that's what should happen. Which is what is um, happening. Yes. Because I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in the passive switch. Um, but I'm... Well, if you, with the explicit prompt restart switch? Right, right. That, that switch exists, and it really has no reason to exist other than to, you know, provide a function that changes the default behavior. You know, in a silent, it's just gonna it's gonna happen. Silent, you don't know, prompt restart doesn't work. Uh -uh. Um, and for MSI, a silent install, the only thing you can do is suppress or no restart. I think that's a switch for burn, right? All right. So here here's what I would love if someone could do. Maybe before the end of the meeting, can they try this real quick in a VM? <sighs> Not you, Bob. You have to take notes. Someone else. <sighs> Uh, if someone could try this real quick with an MSI and see what it does. I can confirm the passive in MSI. Oh, no, I can't. Never mind. Take it back. Okay. So I know it'll do UAC prompt. So, um, and then based off of what MSI does, I think Burn probably should do the same. If we take this, we have to put it in four because it'll be a breaking change in the command line. Yeah. Yeah, that I agree with. All right, so anybody out there willing to grab this real quick to try that while we're here? And we can either 
close this or open it to fix it to be the same as when it's a scholar behavior. That's, I think, probably the best thing we should do. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. All right, so four and... update this to be matched the MSI behavior, whatever that is, or just wait until we verify. Mm. How about we just don't touch this bug and then verify it? Hopefully someone can verify it. Okay. And based on when it comes back, we'll fix it for, or we'll just go away. Okay. Add support for .NET Framework 4.6.1. Yay. More work. This one in particular calls out for the need to have extensions that are tied to book services, however. Uh, yeah, it's a battle for another day. Okay. I don't disagree. Yes. I don't disagree. That would be a good thing. We'd filter this bug the right place, so on and so forth. But yeah. Um, but yeah, we should take that. We can take it in 3x. be a yep. great thing for someone to do. Error in burn does not reach custom bootstrapper application. Install per machine, rename, remove the pseudo bundle. The pseudo bundle. It, uh, it's not pseudo bundle. No, that's that's a terminology thing. From the related bundle. Oh, so the related. Okay, so toast to related bundle. No, it's not. It's not even a related bundle. I think. I think it's actually the original. It's the cached bundle. I oh. think. No. On detect related. He's saying on detect related bundle doesn't happen. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it wouldn't happen anyway. Sorry, that's I, I I don't think it's related to related bundles or pseudo bundles. Oh, okay. I think it's just if you remove the cache, there's no. Oh no, you're right. That doesn't make sense. It has sense. to be related bundles because you wouldn't have been to launch it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're not running. It. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. It's yep. going to be a pseudo okay. bundle because the related bundles are pseudo bundles because um, they don't exist. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Um, so. So you can't find a related bundle, and he's saying you don't get it, or she is saying that you don't get an error when that happens. There's no event for on failed to detect related bundle. Yeah, and it's it's kind of more of a warning. There's no indication that this happens. Yeah, except in the log. Ignore it, I guess. Yeah, from a BA's point of view, there's no way to know. Oh, old bundle. It is a related bundle. It's an upgrade. Sure. So the old bundle's not getting uninstalled and they're ending up with some interesting mishmash state. Well, that's going to happen no matter what. If it is. Messing with the cache. There's it is. No so the question is, should the BA be able to say, hey, I detected a related bundle, but you've corrupted your machine. What do you do? I, you know, I guess the BA could decide to say something like go see this support case um, and then fail or something if it's that bad or continue well I mean I'm guessing here it continues because it is just a warning well, no, today it sorry I'm just saying today it it just continues because it doesn't even get the error well I'm saying I wouldn't want it to fail just because the upgrade uninstall couldn't happen Right. Yeah, you know, like Jacob says the, the right. bundle itself is gone, so you know, you're always going to be in that you know, bad state. But yeah, the question is, do we tell a BA that we have found the machine in a bad state? So if the BA wants to be paranoid, it can tell the user User, we have detected that you're in this state. Go see this, you know, support article on the internet that tells you what you did to your machine and how you need to do all these steps to fix it and we're not going to install anymore because it's not worth supporting your messed up machine basically yeah, in nicer no. words that's the problem um, so today no... the VA can't do that yeah. yeah and I don't know so uh, let's toss this in four and talk about it I mean it's I can kind of see one and be able to get that error out Yeah, yeah, it would, it would be a break, you know, either breaking change to undetect related bundle or 
some new callback. Yeah, I don't think you want undetect related bundle to fail. Maybe you do. Maybe it is. You, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it's just that we have to pass a failure state. So, look, yeah. I detected this, but it's in a this failure state. Right. That's what I was I was looking at because I'm like, you. It's the same data. It's just yes. you need a, a flag that says you know, and each result that says yeah, this isn't going to work. So, so I, I got this far. I found that there's something, and then this error code is wrong with it. Good luck figuring right. out what that means. Yep. Yep. Like here it is, not found. So it's like I found it, but it's not found. And the most case in this, most likely case in this case is that the cache has been cleared prematurely. Okay, um, that's that's a four. We, let's toss it at four and see if we we can think about what that means. I don't really like hiding errors from BAs, although you know, giving them some something useful to act on is a good thing too. But whatever, yeah, we, we'll, we should talk about what we want to do there. All right. Dun dun dun, and we're off. Man, you're fast, Bob. It's good. Some of the harder ones. Okay, right. back. We're done with triage. On to the most exciting thing that I know everybody's waiting in bated breath. Uh, three ten two. Uh, there will be a three ten two. We have a fix. We're waiting on it. The um, Microsoft has communicated with us. They asked us to postpone any movement on it until January so that maybe they will fix the issue. Um, I, that's my only assumption is that they've decided they are going to fix the issue and they're asking for us to wait until January bef so they can get the fix out before this thing goes out. So it's not a zero date do it, exploit, it's a day one exploit or whatever it is that you get the thing documented after it's done. So since they asked nicely, that's what we're going to do is we'll have this all done early January, early mid-January, I guess. And at this point, I'm not going to talk about 3.10.2 until we release it, because there's nothing else to say about it other than we will be doing this and it will be documented at this point in time. Yay. Other things, more exciting things. Hey, things that people are happier that they want to talk about. Anybody looking forward to family and friends and the holidays? No. <laughs> Cole for you, my friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> I finally got invited to a holiday party. My, my wife was just saying that this year like, there's hardly anybody. Can we continue with 311? Yes, we can continue with 311. I, we should be able to do the branching such that 310.2 comes out of master and 310 or 311 comes out of develop. We should be able to do that without any problem. Um, so, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, so that means I have to start going through all the 311 pull requests. Damn. Well, let's get the branch in the right order, and then let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. want that 310 fix that I submitted. Oh, right, the DTF thing. That seems to be solving the problem. Did we ever get a real answer to that, Sean? Like, was there ever a connect bug? that was filed or otherwise answered to that thing to say, yes, this is why shell execute works. Yeah. I still have yet to see how you actually file a bug against Windows, even informally. Oh, Connect doesn't do it? Is that no, Visual Studio? No. That's just Visual Studio, yeah. yeah. We can file against Visual Studio. No. <laughs> Joking. Um, I don't know if they have any managed custom actions. <gasps> if they did, no. Um, <laughs> proxy all <laughs> issues through Visual Studio, whatever. Since they're the only ones listening. Um, all right, well, we'll see. Uh, anything else? Um, anything else? We can do a little bit of process work and stuff like that. Uh, so a little uh, random bookkeeping. Bob and I will may well I definitely will be and Bob may be out next week. So I think we're probably gonna skip the meeting the eleventh, then we'll do the one on the eighteenth, then we'll skip the one on Christmas and New Year's and then we'll do the one on the eighth. So we're gonna have like three meetings There's in the one next more. one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one more this year. Unless one people are really year. Yeah, I mean I I think it'll work I don't think we're ending up with a whole lot of stuff. 
going on. Um, if something pops, you know, we'll do it. But at this point, everything's been pushed into January anyway, which is pretty common this time of year. Um, yeah. Except for people everyone who starts. Work. Everyone starts taking their use it or lose it vacation. Yeah. Although, man, are we ever busy right now? So I don't know what happens. Yeah. But um, this is the problem being a worldwide company. I think we're getting hit by companies that aren't sunk to this calendar are the calendar that we're used to here. So, John, you said July. Interesting. <sighs> July, August, it's common in Europe. Yeah, I guess, right? Yeah. Can be that way, too, but, man, now it's just crazy. So, all right, well, if we don't have anything else, we'll keep this to a sub-30-minute meeting, all goods and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll do another meeting on the 18th is the current plan. And and then, you know, we'll talk about see what we're doing there and then we can wish every wish everybody happy holidays and declare victory for two thousand fifteen to come out in two thousand sixteen, swinging right off the bat with a release. Like nothing like starting a re- year or new year with a release, right? Uh yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well all right, people, have a good two weeks and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.